Okay. Um, coming up. And so um, I just want to do some review. I don't have that much work um, to be done. Okay. So I was wondering if you had a couple things you could do for me. Okay. Like um, mix my equations up and stuff. I can do that. Okay. Um, a lot of it, um, I really want to focus, I, I, uh, I never really got um, function notation really well. Okay. So I was wondering if we can work on some of that. And then, um, let me see. By function, uh, by function notation, do you mean what that is? Yeah. That's the same as a Y. Okay. Now, why do we use a different notation? Because... If I said y is equal to 2x plus 3, mm. I don't have a convenient way of saying, well, what is y when x is 4? But, okay. but if I use function notation, in other words, if I say f of x is equal to 2x plus 3, now I have a real easy way of saying, what is f of x when x equals 4? Well, I write it like this. And when I say evaluate this function when x equals 4, it means plug in 4 whenever we encounter x. So f of 4 would be 11. Whereas okay. if I have defined my equation as y, I can't really do that. I can't, th this doesn't really make sense, f of, or y of 4. I've seen people do it, but you can't really do that when it's y. Okay. That makes sense. So the f of x notation is more robust. It allows you to do more things in terms of uh, okay. evaluating the function. And it doesn't have to be f of x. It can be g of x or h of x. Or, and those are usually the three that are used the most, f of x, g of x, and h of x. Okay. But they're all the same as y. What else? I don't know what else to say okay. with regards to that. Um, I have a couple. Well, let's let's okay. let's go to the problems you have, and then maybe I can take it from there. I don't know. It. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, it says let g of x be a vertical shift of f of x equals x down three units. Okay. What they're saying is the parent function is that which is, I could write as this also. But they're okay. using the more robust notation. So I'm fine with f of x equals x. This also says, by the way, that the variable is going to be x, not anything else. In other words, it wouldn't be correct to say f of x was equal to t squared plus 1. Then it would be f of t. Okay. okay, so when you use the f of x or g of x notation, what you're saying is the variable that we're going to have on the other side of the equation is going to be x. Okay. okay, well, the simplest equation is y equal x. Okay, and what did they say? They wanted you to shift it up by 3 or down by 3? Um, it says down by 3 units. Okay, that is f of x minus 3, or, or x minus 3. Okay. In other words, if I were to take my line, there's the line, there's the line y equal x. Okay, there's the x-axis and the y-axis. Well, they're saying that if I wanted to graph this, so all I got to do is take this line and shift it down by three units, so that it would be parallel. Yeah, and it would be parallel. Okay. In other words, it retains okay. its same shape exactly. It doesn't change at all. So all I'm doing is shifting the whole thing down by three. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so um, another one says 
find f, um, and then in parentheses minus one. So f of minus one, negative one, would you say? Yes. Okay. So f of negative one. Um, find f of negative one when f um, of x equals negative four x plus two. Okay, so how do you find f of negative 1? So would you put negative 1 for the x mm -hmm. or on both sides? Not on both so, sides. Oh, oh, negative 4, right? Well, no. In other words, this is the function right here. Minus 4x plus 2. What they're okay. saying is we want to evaluate that when x is minus 1. So the way I would evaluate f of negative 1 is I would plug negative 1 in wherever I see x. Well, there's still a negative 4 there. There's x. I'm going to put negative 1 there, and I'm going to add 2. Now okay. simplify that. OK, so it would be negative 4 plus 2. No, negative right? 4 times negative 1. Negative. Oh, so we have positive 4. Right. Plus 2, so that would be 6. So okay. f of negative 1 would be 6. What would f of, neg of uh, 3 be? Um, then it will be um, negative 12. Well, not quite. It's true I would substitute 3 for x, but remember you have to evaluate the entire function. So it will be 10. No. No? Negative 12 plus 2. Oh. OK. And you can't combine with negative 12 and 10. What's negative 12 plus 2? As 10. Or negative 10. Negative 10. All right. Got something negative that's going to work good for you. Hold on one moment. Let me pull it up. Have I told you about this website, A Plus Math? I think so. I don't remember. Okay. Excellent for testing your arithmetic skills. And there's almost nothing more important in math than being good at arithmetic. <coughs> being good at arithmetic is the foundation of being good at algebra. It's the foundation of being good at geometry, trig, all of them. So let's go through these, and I want you to give me your answer as quick as possible, and I'm going to write it in there, and we'll just go to the next one. <coughs> OK. So um, it's a little small. Let me make it full screen real quick. What's that? It, um, it was a little small. I have to get close. Um, negative 3. Next. OK. Um, 4. That's division. Oh, so it's 4 divided by negative 4, so it'll be negative 10. Negative 11. Oh, I'm sorry, negative 11. OK, you don't need to apologize. Can you hold on one second? Yeah, of course. Oh, but i got to stick my dinner in. Okay, so negative 5 minus negative 9, would, would that be like, um, would you be like adding 9 and 5 then? Well, let's talk about how we do subtraction. Here, let me bring it up. One moment. So for me to do minus 5, minus a minus 9. What I generally tell everybody to do is turn subtraction problems into addition problems. 
Okay. We're looking at three dashes here. Which one is the subtraction? The one in the middle. Right. That is not subtraction, nor is that. That's a negative 5 and a negative 9. So the first thing you have to do is learn when your subtraction and when you're talking, looking at a negative sign. That's what confuses everybody with this kind of a problem. So if you turn subtraction problems into addition problems, so all I do is change the subtraction sign and change the sign of whatever was being subtracted. Well, negative 9 was being subtracted, so we're going to do that. Now, solve it. Okay, so, okay, that would it be uh, negative, or just 4? Positive 4, exactly. Positive 4. Okay. Okay. That's the way you want to do all uh, subtraction problems. However, let's look at another one before we go to this next one. Okay. What is, I want you to do it the way I just said. Okay. Okay, so you would add them together, right? So it would be like negative it's a step-by-step -step no. process. Which is the subtraction sign? Oh, the one on the the one to the right. Okay, so I'm going to turn that to an addition sign. I can only do that if I do something else. What? I'm change the other sign. Which sign? The positive. The left side. No. No. The thing that was being subtracted. That's right. You can make the nine a negative right. nine. Right. What, what's six. being subtracted here? Nine, right? Right. Okay, so if I change the subtraction, I have to change the sign on whatever was being subtracted. Now, I'm adding a negative 9 to a negative 7. What is that? Um, negative 16. Yeah, see, that's an easy problem. Nobody has problems adding two ne negative numbers. That's an easy problem. But everybody has troubles subtracting a negative number or a positive number from a negative number. You go out and ask that question on the street, I guarantee you 9 out of 10 Americans would not be able to answer what's minus 7 minus 9. That's how hard that problem is. And especially if you've grown up in the calculator age, uh, because, well, that's a whole other theory. But it's, it's, it's difficult to grow up in an age where calculators are everywhere and be good at arithmetic. It just is. It's difficult to acquire those skills. Yes, true. It really is. Uh, and it's no fault of your own. When I was a kid, you know what we did in math class all day long? What? We got up at the board and two people would go to the board with chalk and the teacher would yell out problems and whoever got it right first got to stay at the board. So it was like a game and you wanted to be at the board so you got really good. I mean I was pretty good. I got to stay at the board almost the whole class. Always. That's good. And but we didn't have calculators back then. So you really had to develop your arithmetic skills. And the fact is, is that when you get to algebra and geometry, you really need those skills. You cannot rely on calculators. You really can't. There's too many. When you deal with an algebraic equation, you have to do like seven or eight little tiny calculations, usually one-digit calculations. You can't do use a calculator for that. It slows you down too much, and I've never seen anybody successfully do it anyway. So it, it's just too hard to go back and forth quickly. Plus, you need to be able to do things like factor numbers and stuff like that. You can't factor. Factor 36 for me. Factor? Uh -huh. So is that like two numbers? That yeah, two on? numbers that multiply together to give you 36. Six. Six times six, okay. What else? Um... Uh, we could do 2 times um, 13, or uh, no, 20, no. You're on the 28? right track. Cut this in half. But the real okay. factor that you would know instantly 
is 9 times 4, but you would only know that if you really knew your multiplication tables well. Right. So factoring really ends up being knowing your multiplication tables. You can't factor a number without knowing your multiplication tables. And there's no way to do it on a calculator. I mean, the way you did it was kind of the way you would end up doing it. I, I can give you a little bit of help here on how to factor a number. First of all, start with the number and 1. Now, cut this in half and double this. So that works. Now, cut okay. this in half and double that again. So that works. Now, okay. that doesn't give you all of them, unfortunately. Notice that I didn't get 6 times 6 that way. I can't right. cut 9 in half anymore. So it looks like I'm done, but I'm really not. It, there's also a 6, 6 in there. And this process of factoring a number is critically important. And when you go to factor quadratics, you absolutely have to be able to factor a number. And you can't really factor a number unless you know your multiplication tables really well. Right. So that's why this is helpful. Let's keep going through this. I, I want to see how good or bad you are here. Don't, don't be ashamed at all. There's no judgment on my part at all. I just want, uh, actually, this is a site that you'd probably want on your computer. I already, I already you have it on there. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, so what's minus 10 minus 1? Negative 11? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because the hard part is like everyone's using a calculator. Like on tests, people freak out they can't do it because they don't have a calculator. Exactly. Exactly. This is just not a skill that can be substituted by a calculator. It just isn't. Right. Um, negative three. Good. And speed is important. You want to be able to do these quickly. Does that say negative 12 times negative four? Yes. Okay, so um, that'd be positive 48? Or no, negative 48. No, you're right. This is, positive yeah, point? this is one of the things that this helps with, is when you're multiplying yeah. a negative by a negative, it turns positive. When you're right. adding a negative to a negative, it stays negative. Yeah, that always gets Yeah, there. it all depends on whether you're multiplying or adding. And adding is actually tougher than multiplying. It really is, if you think about it. I mean, the toughest problem I can give a student is minus... 9 minus 7. If I said, what's yeah. minus 9 times minus 7? Well, most of them know that that's a positive 63. In other words, when you multiply right. a negative times a negative, it makes it positive. So this is a positive 48. This is subtraction. Okay. So then it will be um, negative 9. Uh, it'll be 5. Um, negative two. So, um, negative or positive twenty-two. See, if you were to spend five minutes a night on this program, it would mm -hmm. improve your math skills tremendously. I cannot yeah, stress I'll, that enough. Like, now, when you get on their um, website, it get, it says basic flashcards. Uh huh. Is, is that where it is? Well, here, let me. Let me uh, go to it, and I will put it in my uh, chat window here, so you can copy it directly, and I'll show you how to okay. use it, uh, because it's a little bit tricky. Uh, hold on. Okay. Where the heck is it? A plus, flashcards, positive or negative. It's, this is the page that's important. Okay? okay? Let me put this over here. Open up your go to meeting window. I'm going to paste right. that into there and hit enter. Now click on that link in the chat window. Um, click on that link in the chat window. It'll open up a browser window in your computer. Oh, okay. Click on that. Save. And, okay, I have it. Save it. Now the key here is which of these to check box. I, this is not a skill that is all that helpful, two by ones. It's the one by ones that you need to practice on. That one by one, this one by one, this and this, those four. Addition, and you always want to make sure you practice your addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division randomly. 
In other words, let the program choose what they're going to give you. You don't want okay. to practice all addition and then all subtraction and so forth. Mix it up because that's where the problem comes in. So check box those. Don't check box the two by ones. And okay. you can leave the timer off or on. If you put a time, there's not a whole lot of need for a timer. Your goal is going to be to go through this as fast as you can. Okay. And this is what will come up the moment you hit start. So what's this? Um, so that would be times, eight, um, so would that be 80? Yep. Okay. Um, 12 minus 7, so they'll be adding the 7 to the 12, and then, right? Yep. Okay, so they're going to be negative 19. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, negative 5. Uh -huh. Okay, um, negative 70. Um, okay, so then we would do the plus in the middle and the plus on the other. So it will be, um, yeah, so it will be like kind of, okay. So the, when you so say the plus be able to on be, the other, um, what do you mean by the other? Which, um, well, in the middle, the subtraction symbol in the middle, you'd make that a plus. Yeah. The negative next to the 5 would be a okay. plus. Okay, that's what you meant by the other. Okay, so what's the Sorry. That's okay. What's the answer? Negative 6. Yeah. Okay. See, so yeah, once you, yeah, once you practice it like this, after a while, those rules just kind of sink into your brain. And it doesn't take long. I'm not kidding you that if you spent five minutes on this thing for a week, your arithmetic skills would be tremendous. They would be. And they would take care of a lot of the problems that I see in your math. You would not have any problems with algebra if your arithmetic skills were better. Okay. Um, so 11, so would that be negative 22? Yeah, all right. I think you're pretty good on those. Okay. I also like how it shows you the little bar on the top, which is number correct, number attempted. Uh-huh. Yeah. It tells you you know. Yeah. Okay. So what other kind of stuff um, do we want to work on? Okay, we got about a half hour here. Okay. I need you to tell me um, what you want to work on, just because algebra is such a broad Right. Category. Um. What do you, are second. you working on um, uh, all linear equations? You're not doing quadratics yet or anything? I don't think we're doing quadratics unless I... Okay. Quadrat a quadratic is this. It's got an x squared in it. Um, oh yeah, I think we're gonna. So if I look at that, that's a quadratic. Also, this is a quadratic. Uh, x squared minus one is a quadratic. Anything that has an x squared in it, and maybe an x or a constant also is a quadratic. I don't have any of my review guide. I remember we. I think we did a couple of them in class. Have you had to factor? Um, no, I don't think so. You haven't had to break a quadratic down? Have you had to foil two linears? In other words, mm -mm. Do, you ha do you know how to do this? Um, Is this something you need to know how to do for your test? I don't think so. All right, well, let's not do that then. See, that, that, okay. that's where I'm at, is I don't know what it is you've had in class. Right. So I, I don't know what your review material is. Did the, te you, did the teacher give you a review material? Um, yes, but they're all like, um, they're not really really good questions that make you write it out. Kind of, it's uh, it's multiple choice. Okay. And so it's, it's hard to verbalize, but. Um, well, it's all I need is some examples of problems that you're expected to know how to do. Okay. Um, you want to do like a word problem? Sure. Okay. Word, prob Sam, word problems usually give people trouble. Yeah, well, word me, problems really give me trouble. Okay, let me tell you the secret. Give me the last sentence first. Write an inequality to show how much she can spend on, on music S. Okay. 
This is a little different kind of word problem. Now read the whole thing for me. Sam earned $450 during winter vacation. She needs to save $180 for a vacation over spring break. She can spend the remainder of the money on music. Write an inequality to show how much she can spend on music S. Okay. So let's let Y be the amount she can spend. Oh, S, I guess. So I could say S has to be less than what? Um, 450. Oh, no, 180, right? No. She's got to she got to come out of this vacation with 180, right? Right. Okay. So what can she spend? Oh, so she can subtract. You can yeah. subtract that. It's <laughs> fine if you have to use a calculator for this. I, this is not the kind of math you need to be able to do to solve algebra problems. I mean, it is, but it's acceptable to use a calculator when you have three digits minus three digits. Would it be 200? Do you have a calculator in front of you? Um, I, yeah, I do. Well, let's, it's 270, but let's it see is. why it's 270. It's because these two numbers have to add to 450. So whenever you do a subtraction, especially if you're doing it in your head or on paper, after you do it, make sure the two numbers add back to the original number. Okay. okay. And that way you are checking your answer and verifying pretty much that it's right. If this does not add to 450, then 270 is wrong. In other words, let's say I, I put 260 down. Well, mm -hmm. I add it back together, that adds to 440. 440. So that's not right. I've got to increase it by 10. So that's really okay. the way to check your answers. So the inequality would be... S has to be less than $270. Actually, less than or equal. <clears throat> you know the difference between less than or equal? I do. Okay. She can spend $270. So would another answer be 180 plus X is less than or equal to 450? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In other words, if... If it depends on what you've defined as your variable. Okay, if we're going to say X is the amount she can spend, amount to spend, well, it, I could say X, um, what did you just say? Um, 450 minus X? What, what did you just say? You, you said? Um, 180 plus S is less than or equal to 450. Okay, that is true, but it's not simplified. Okay. We would want to simplify that. And we would subtract 80 from both exactly. sides. Exactly, so we would end up okay. with that. That makes sense. That S is less than 270 is the answer, merely because if you can simplify something, you're always expected to simplify. Okay. In other words, you would never want to give this as an answer for what is x but, equal to. Um, you would have to subtract 2 yeah. from both sides. And get so two. you'd get x equals 8. You would never tell the teacher, well, x plus 2 equals 10. You would always simplify. That makes sense. Okay. That was not exactly the word problem I was expecting, but go ahead. Uh, I mean... That was that wasn't, that wasn't really much of a word problem. That was more of a convert this to an expression. Yeah. Um, well, do you have any word problems? Um, problem with me giving you word problems is I'm not sure if they're the level that you've had in class or they're higher or lower. Word problems okay. come in all shapes and sizes. They come in two variables, one variable. Uh, I got one yesterday that was quite tough where you had to figure out how defining the variable wasn't easy. Usually, the reason I said to you, tell me the last sentence first, 
the, figure out what you're Yeah, the secret, to the secret to word problems is to begin by defining your variable. By that, I mean uh, S is equal to the amount she can spend. That's defining your variable. Okay? Once you've defined your variable, now the equations kind of write themselves. We know that S has to be less than 270. The amount she can spend has to be less than 450. I could write this 450 minus 180, if, that, if you prefer, but I'm still going to have to simplify it. I can't give that as an answer. I still have to do this, but it does tell you how to proceed by writing that. But the real secret is to define your variable and spell it out, and now you know exactly. Usually after you do this step, the rest of it flows pretty easily. I can assure you that if you do this as the first step on every word problem you encounter, it'll make it much easier. Um, okay, I have, I have one that I think is more of a okay. word problem. The last, um, it, it gives you a chart. Let me give you the chart first. Okay. Okay, it says tank size, in parentheses, gallons, and then X. It's the left column. Let's see if I got this right. Like that? Um, no, uh, it'll be the other way. It, um, tank size is X. Okay. Sorry, my bad. Sorry. Right. I'm going to clear on that. And what's the other variable? Total cost, which is F of X. Okay. So we got total cost, which is F of X. That's like Y. And then we got mm -hmm. tank size, which, is, which X. is X. Okay. How many values do we have? Okay, going down X, it's a lot. Oh, we have three different. How ones. many rows do I need? Um, three more. Okay. Okay. So, um, eleven, fifteen, seventeen. Okay, and on the right side, it's um twenty-one point four five, twenty-eight point two five. 31.65. Okay. What do they want? And can you read your, the last sentence? What's that? What do they want? Okay. So, um, can you read your last sentence? Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um, write an equation for the function in slope-intercept form. Okay. Then, find the cost of a fill-up and a car wash for a customer with a truck whose tank is 22 gallons. Okay, hold that last part. Let's do the first part. Okay. We're going to write this equation in slope-intercept format, right? right? What is the general form for slope-intercept format? Y equals mx plus b. Okay. There's two variables we have to figure out, m and b. Okay. How do we get M? What is slope? What's the verbal definition of slope? Um, the rate in which it goes up, like to the right. Rise over run. Under run. Under if run. you want to remember it, remember it for the rest of your life, remember that. Okay. okay. Now, that translates to a couple of things. The difference in the Y's divided by the difference in the X's. Mm-hmm. I know you're not, you don't know what that triangle means, but that means the change. The change in the Y divided by the change in the X. That's what okay. rise over run means. Well, the change in the Y is Y sub 2 minus Y sub 1. The change in the X is X sub 2 minus X sub 1. So technically, that's what slope is equal to. But that's pretty complicated and tough to remember. Two years from now, you might not remember this. Rise over run is pretty simple to remember. Right. And if you forget the order, R I becomes before you. 
In other words, okay. they're in alphabetical order, rise over run, okay. as opposed to run over rise would not be in alphabetical order. Okay? That makes sense. So, okay. Yeah, you know, mathematics is all about remembering stuff. And remembering okay. stuff is all about figuring out how what little cues you can throw into something to, to remember it. And that's that's one way. Yeah. Rise over run is the second letter that is in alphabetical order. The the I comes before you in the alphabet. Okay. So we okay. need so sorry. So we need the slope. In other words, okay. we need to come up with M for starters, and then we'll tackle B. But we need M. So how Y is, remember Y is the same as F of, F of X. Mm -hmm. So pick two Y's and let's subtract them. Okay, two Y's. Um, so 21.45? Start with a bigger one because we're going to subtract a smaller one and we don't want to deal with negative numbers if we don't have to. Okay, sorry, my bad. Um, 28.25. Okay. And then 21.45. Minus 21.45. In other words, that's y sub 2 minus y sub 1. Okay. Okay. Now. In the same thing Yeah, for the same thing for x. Okay, so then be 14 15, minus 10. 15 minus 11? Or, I'm sorry. Um, you have to do the corresponding x values. In other words, instead of the, the right. value that corresponds to the 28, 25 is 15. Right. I was on a different problem for a okay. second. Okay. And then 11. Okay. 15. So that's the rise over the run between these two okay. points. Okay. I could also use this point and this point. And I could have done 31.65 minus 21.45 all over 17 minus 11. Okay. okay, either one gives you a slope, either one. So let's figure out what this number is here. Okay. That is 6.8 over 4. Well, what does that simplify to? Simplify? Uh -huh. What is 6.8 um, divided by 4? 3.8. Well, let's talk about division. Okay. Okay, I go 4 into 6 one time. Subtract. Bring down the 8. 4 into 28 goes 7. Decimal point goes right there. 1.7 is what 6.8 divided by 4 is. So our slope is 1.7. In other words, okay. we don't ever want to give a number that can be simplified as an answer. 1.7 is simplified. Okay. okay. Now let's go back and look at our equation, y equal mx plus b. Well, I know now that y equals 1.7x plus b. Okay. But I don't know what b is. Right. How can I get B? Um, would you go down the equation? No, I, I, I can't remember this. There's a very similar thing like Y sub 2 minus Y sub 1. Well, uh, let, me, let me give you some, let me Let me say something here. Um, okay. Whatever B is. By the time we get it, uh -huh. when we plug it in, I'll, that'll be our equation. Let's say B is 2. Okay? okay? So I'd put 2 in for B. This equation means every one of these points has to satisfy this equation. So if B was 2, then I could plug in Y of 21.45 and X of 11, and this would be true. So I can plug in any 
x and y value into my final equation, and it has to be true. But it, you have to, okay, I see so that. So now that gives me a way to solve for b. That makes sense. So pick a set of points, plug it in for x and y, and we'll solve for b, and then we'll have b. Okay. So what, Let's do um, 15. Now make sure you plug in the y value for y. Oh, okay, sorry. So um, 28.25 equals 1.7 times 15. Plus B. Okay. Now notice we have an equation that only has one variable in it. B. So do you have a calculator in front of you? I yeah, it's only for when we get multiply, it. Okay. Multiply one point seven times fifteen. Um twenty-five point five. Now subtract that number from 28.25. Um, okay. Right, because that's the next step is to subtract 25.5 from both sides. Right. Yeah. Now we have our equation. Okay, that makes sense. And your sense. final equation needs to have a y and an x in it. So it will be y equals, was it, was it 1.7? Uh -huh. um, x plus 2.75? Yeah. Now, okay. that's our equation, and every single one of these points would fit that equation. Meaning, I could plug in okay. that set of points, and it would be correct. If I plugged in 11 okay. for x and whatever that y value is, that would still be a proper equation. By a proper equation, I mean it would still equal. y would still equal what's on the right. For an equation okay. to be valid, this is a linear equation. So the equation of a straight line. All three of these points are on that straight line. Okay. If I were to graph this straight line, I would start at 2.75. I would go up 17 over 10, or up 1.7 over 1. Well, let me go up 1.7 over 1. There's a slope of 1.7. Connect the two lines. That's the equation that fits these points. Now, what I mean by fitting these points is if I look for 11 and 21.45, that's on my curve. If I go out here to 11, this point right here, guess what? That's 21.45. Every point in our table is on that line. It, fall, it doesn't fall over here. It doesn't fall there. It's on that line. It has to be. Whatever equation of the line we come up with, we came up with it because all of these points are on that line. So here's a question. Uh -huh. um, if you take your points that you're given, the 11, 15, and 17, and the other side, uh -huh. if you were to graph it right away and find the point where it crossed the line, the y-intercept, and found the slope that way, would you get the exact same equation? Uh, well, that's an excellent question. And yes, the problem is you'll see exactly what it is. Okay, I'm going to plot uh -huh. that point. 11, 21.45. Eh. Let, me, let me change my scale here a little bit. Let me make this 21.45. Okay, that'll work. Here's what happens if you do what you said. Okay, my next point is 15 and 28.25. Well, 15 looks like it would be about right there. 28.25, I'm just guessing here. So we have this point, and we have this point, and that's going to be 28.25. And then we have our third point, which is 17. 
That would be about 17 and 31. Mm -hmm. 0.65. All right. Mm -hmm. So we have three points. They look like they line up in a straight line, which they, they do. So I'm going to connect them. What's my y-intercept? Uh, it looks like a negative from the graph. Right. In other words, it's hard to read. Uh -huh. Based on my scale, even if I had engineering paper, it would uh -huh. depend on me drawing it accurately. And the numbers are um, decimals, too. Right. Exactly. So the okay. graphical method is not a great method because you don't know what this point is. You can read it off the graph, but at best you can estimate it. Okay. okay. When we did it algebraically, we solved for it perfectly. B was 2.75, I believe. Mm -hmm. Well, 2.75 is a number that would be awfully difficult to read off of a graph, even if you had a graph that was engineering paper and everything was labeled. So mm -hmm. graphical methods are approximate at best. You might graph it and read 2.5. Obviously, the way I've done it here, it's not going to be negative. It needs to be positive. But even if I had drawn my points right and made this thing cross the y-axis at a positive point, I still would have had a great deal of difficulty reading the precise number. That makes sense. So that's not the best way to do algebra. It, it's certainly a way that they're going to introduce you to, and they're going to teach you, and they're going to show you that you can solve by graphical methods. And you can, it's but it's just not harder, precise. More, yeah. It isn't precise. Okay. What else you got? Um, well, we need to um, find um, a customer with a truck whose tank is 22 gallons. Oh, this is the second part to that problem? Yeah. And what did we get? We got y equals 1.7x. Was it plus 2.75? Um, yes. Okay. So now they're saying, what would a truck with 22 gallons cost? Yeah. Okay. Notice that they used the f of x instead of y, so we're going to use it also. So what are they asking? They're asking, what is f of 22? Okay. So then you have to do 1.7 times, in the parentheses, 22 plus 2.75. Exactly. Should I get off my calculator? Uh -huh. Yeah, that, okay. this is a problem that uh, nobody expects you to be able to do this manually. Okay, I'd be um, 37.4. Is that including the adding um, of the 2.75? Oh, I didn't add that. I'm sorry. I forgot. Um, um, 40.15. That would be the cost of a truck with a 22-gallon tank size. Okay. And let's make sure that it passes the ballpark test. The ballpark test is, does that make sense? That 22 would cost 40. What if we came up with an answer that was $4? Would that make sense? Uh, $4? Yeah. No. no. If we came up with $4, it would not pass the ballpark test. No. The ballpark test tells me that 22 gallons better be more expensive than $31. So an answer of $40 and change it passes the ballpark test. It makes, okay. it makes sense. A negative number would not have made sense. 140 would not have made sense. Right. But 40 makes, that's the ballpark. That's where we should be. No, no, that's no. a good test to always do when you're doing math, is make sure your answer passes the ballpark test. 
because frequently it's really easy to be off by a factor of 10. Whenever you're doing math, it's really easy to get your decimal point off. So it uh -huh. wouldn't have been that hard to calculate or not, it wouldn't have been that hard to come up with an answer of either that or that. Neither of which, right. neither of which would pass the ballpark test. So if you come up with this as an answer and you put it to the ballpark test, you know you're off by a factor of 10. So then that's more point we're changing. Yeah, pretty much. If you came up with four, if you came up with that as an answer, put it to the ballpark test, you know that can't be right. Well, most likely yeah. I need to multiply it by 10, and that's the answer. That's not always the solution, but most of the time, if it fails the ballpark test, it means you're off by a factor of 10. Okay. Is there a third part to this? Um, there's not a third part to All this. Right. Um, there's a couple other ones. Okay. Um, got like five minutes. Okay. Um, let me do a word problem then. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, it gives you two lines. You have to tell if they're perpendicular or parallel okay. or neither. What are the equations? Um, okay, it's a y equals negative one six x plus seven um, over two. All over two, like that? No, no, sorry. Um, seven. What would you say? Seven, sir. Seven halves. Okay. Seven halves. Okay. So I would say this is y equals minus one sixth times x plus seven halves. Okay. okay. Um, and then the other one is, oh, my bad, I'm reading the answer, one of the answers. First of all, let's talk about okay. parallel and perpendicular. This is pretty easy. I, I, okay. can, I can take it from here. Okay, I'm going to say Parallel that. means same slope. What is the slope of this line? Negative one six. So if I wanted a line that was parallel to this, is all I have to do is have it give us a slope of minus one sixth. In other words, if that's a line that is parallel to the first line. What if um, instead of negative one sixth, it was negative um, two twelfths? Would that be the same thing? Yes. Okay. Negative two twelfths is the same number as negative one sixth. Always simplify. simplify. Always. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. In other words, nobody's ever going to give you that as an answer. Okay. That would be a wrong answer. If you gave that as an answer, your teacher's taking off points because even if one sixth is the right answer, you haven't simplified it by saying two right. twelfths. So always simplify by definition with math. Now, okay. you have two kinds of lines. You have lines that are parallel and you have lines that are perpendicular. Parallel, same slope. Perpendicular is, you got to do two things. It's the, I don't care how you call it, you can call it the negative reciprocal. You can call it the opposite flip. Whatever is the easiest way for you to memorize it. Mm -hmm. But it means you have to do two things. You have to change the sign, and you have to flip the fraction. So the perpendicular would be a plus 6. Okay, so, maybe 6 over 1. Yeah. So if I had a line like this, this line is perpendicular to both this line and this line because its slope is the negative or opposite reciprocal. Okay, that makes sense. So let me give you some slopes and you tell me what's parallel and what's perpendicular. Okay. What's parallel to that? Um, parallel would be um, a two. So what's perpendicular to it? Um, a negative two. Uh -uh. You got to do two things. You don't have to, you can't just change the sign, you got to flip it. Remember, there's a one under oh. that. So the, it would, oh, sorry, negative one um, over two. That's the perpendicular right there. 
Okay. My bad. No, no apologies needed. Um, in other words, if you have a fraction, what is the perpendicular to that? Um, to the one half, negative one half. Or oh, sorry. Um, it would be uh three. Good. That is the perpendicular to it. Change the sign and flip it. Okay. Uh, what's the perpendicular to that one? It'll be a, a positive one over ten. You got it. That's all there is to parallel and perpendicular. Parallel means okay. the same slope. Perpendicular means the opposite sign, reciprocal slope. Okay. okay. All right. Let's end it there. You're my last appointment of a extremely busy week. Actually, I got a couple more tomorrow, but this was my last busy day. That's Everybody good. must be done with finals by tomorrow, I guess, huh? Yeah, we only have school on Friday at my school. Oh, yeah, really? Okay. Wow. What school do you go to? Um, uh, Chapel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they got finals going until Friday. Okay. Well, yeah, it's uh, it, they were today, and I only had German and English, and tomorrow I have math, science, and I have um, government. The tough ones are tomorrow, huh? Yeah. Well, good luck. But it's still only half day. Good luck to you. So. Get a good night's sleep tonight. Uh, Thank you. I'll probably talk to you after the holidays. Have a good Christmas. I'll talk to you next year. You as well. Thank you so much for your All right, Connor. Bye-bye.